My name is Eddie Alvarez, and I'll be chairing the panel on environmental racism and indigenous resistance. Um, I'd like to introduce the two panelists. Uh, the first one to my immediate right is Kimberly King. She's an associate professor in the Department of Psychology and an associated faculty member in the Department of Pan-African Studies at Cal State LA, where she teaches courses related to community, multiculturalism, gender, and discrimination. Her research focuses on the psychological and social effects of poverty, race, class, and gender discrimination, and African-American and low-income college students' success and barriers. Kimberly is also the Secretary of Education for the Green Shadow Cabinet and an officer and activist in her union and other faculty organizations and education advocacy groups. She's also a producer and co-host of Beautiful Struggle, a weekly public affairs radio program at Pacifica's KPFK. She was born and raised in Oakland, California by her single mother and grandmother. She obtained her BA in psychology from Yale College and her PhD in uh, psychology from UCLA. Uh, and our other wonderful panelist is uh, Lydia Ponce. Um, she's an LA-based activist. She is active in Idol No More, a peaceful indigenous rights organization which was created out of necessity in response to the illegal legislation passed by Prime Minister Stephen Harper's Canadian government. I Don't Know More is now connected to I Don't Know More Japan, I Don't Know More New Zealand, I Don't Know More Peru, Afghanistan, Australia, Sweden, and Chile, to name a few. Indigenous treaties honor, honored locally and globally protected our environment. I Don't Know More is an international resistance movement of both native and non-native people against the climate change, oil exploration, and resource appropriation. With the disappearance and murder of women from Turtle Island, INM is for women's rights and the protection of women everywhere. Modern day genocide is the rape, assault, and killing women all over the world. And the same crimes are being committed against our Mother Earth. Okay. Um, I'm going to, uh, we're going to have 20 minutes for each panelist. Um, then we're going to open it up to questions and answers. So uh, I'm asking everyone to please turn off your cell phones and please avoid walking in and out. Uh, uh, we're going to try to end uh, about 10 minutes early for lunch. And uh, for the Q&A portion, we're going to allow about a minute to ask a question and uh, two minutes if you have commentary, okay? And we're going to ask everyone to line up right here when, uh, the, um, when that portion begins. So uh, without further ado, let's give a round of applause to Kimberly and Lydia. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Thank you. Um, giving thanks to the Creator and uh, for guidance and the, my ancestors today for guiding my words. It's a blessing truly to, and an honor to be here with you and I want to thank the organization for their diligent hard work and for their love work. Um, I was asked recently to speak at Lamert Park, thank you Sabina for being here, um, after 50 years of a march to Washington, let's just try to add the conversation of 500 years plus for environmental injustice, crime after crime, because after all, if you look in this room, it is just us. We are here today in spite of the history lessons taught and learned, because history depends on who the author is, doesn't it, and who is writing it. So here we are recording this for our history, because we know the truth. We know our sacred fire. We know in our spirit what's right. The civil rights movement long ago was in black and white on TV, and we insert and add uh, women's rights. And I grew up challenged with questions that were never answered. Twice colonized, I sit before you, and I don't speak my mother tongue. I speak Spanish and English. But strong roots grow strong trees, and right now the privatized educators with six figures and more to their income are rewriting ethnic studies right now. The books are being printed in Texas, Look around this room. One ethnic study? What is it, what's it going to be? One chapter? A, a page per culture? But here's the rub. Under capitalism, what are our laws, regulations, and policies really designed to do? Are they designed to protect humanity? Are they designed to protect the environment? No, they're designed to support the capitalist system and the corporations that rule the capitalist system. So 
a lot of us feel, and that's really why we're having this whole conference today, that we can't have clean water. We can't have safe air under capitalism. And we need to figure out how to get to the next place, to a post-capitalist society. Um, today I want to talk um, in the next 10, 15 minutes about capitalism and the changes we're seeing in the means of production today. I want to talk about a couple of examples of environmental racism in terms of access to water and how we can work together to create a cooperative society where the earth and humanity are protected and we all have all the resources needed to thrive, not just to survive, but to thrive. Those resources are available to us. Um, so given that there's this climate crisis, that people are dying, pe some people don't have water, around the world, almost a billion people don't have access to clean water. Why is this happening? Why aren't the powers that be rallying to solve this crisis? It's almost too late to solve it. And why don't they realize that? Is it just that some people are greedy? Is it just that certain politicians don't understand what's really going on? Or is it the capitalist system itself and its profit-making corporations? Under capitalism, corporations must make profits. That is their only function. Any benefit they provide is secondary. They pollute, plunder, murder, destroy the oceans, and poison the air. They change the global climate forever. They allow millions of people to fall into poverty, hunger, destitution. Sorry, I don't know why. Isn't that lovely? No, yeah. My iPhone. Corporations will struggle to the death and the death of you and me and the death of the planet to make their profits. That's how capitalism is structured as an economic system. It's a system. That's what it's designed to do. It is not designed to take care of you and me. There was a time where they were better able to take care of you and me. Now, a lot of us as people of color maybe we don't really remember a time when they were taking care of us. <laughs> However, you guys ever heard of a city called Detroit? Yes. Okay, Detroit had the largest black middle class. People of color, white poor, were able to graduate from high school, go get a job and work at a union job in a factory and buy a house. They were able to buy new cars every other year, if they, probably every year. That's not possible anymore. And that has to do with the connection between capitalism and the need for workers and the decreased need for workers. Now, in automobile factories now, are there tens of thousands of employees working on a, on a line, assembly line, putting the cars together? No. How are they made now? Robots. Robotics. We've all seen that now. They, have, they can't hide it from us anymore. And I'm not against technology and I'm not against robots even. But we can't, robotic production is not compatible with capitalism because they don't need people. If they don't need people, the society is not going to be structured to take care of people. All these things that, that some of us, especially the white-haired folks in the room who have been around for longer, a lot of the young people haven't even had a chance to experience what the capitalist system used to be able to offer the middle class, the so-called middle class, or even the working class. We can figure out ways to use, we don't have to use oil as a way to run things. We can figure out, we can use solar power. Solar power is excellent. Um, some people are getting in trouble for using the sun, for using sun power. And people have gotten arrested for collecting water from the rain. So we gotta, we gotta change that. <laughs> we gotta change that. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't, so even though currently some of the mechani mechanization will lead to more pollution, it does not have to be that way. We have the possibility to work five hours a week doing things that are really needed for society. 